my name is Francesco Carollo, I'm based in London, I am a researcher in, in, in innovation, um, most notably on uh, uh, the implication of a colla collaborative sharing economy on society, uh, innovation methodologies and, uh, and uh, cities, innovation in cities, and I also consult with uh, uh, different types of organization and uh, I am a co-design facilitator. What is your research area? Basically, um, my main research fields are um, how to uh, apply uh, design, I would say, uh, service design to public sector, and how social innovation can be enabled by ICT, which means basically how tech innovation can, be, can have a good and social impact. Give you an example that is both both from a research and consulting side. Uh, I'm helping a few startups, uh, promising startups on early stage that I believe they have uh, 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 the capabilities and potential to have a, a, an impact on society. And one of these basically uh, helps visually impaired people to navigate through cities or indoor and outdoor environments. Uh, by availing uh, the as tech smartphone technology, so they, they instead of using the, the classical cane, the stick, they they use the, the smartphone. So they use technology to help a marginalized uh, uh, you know category of citizen. So that ultim ultimately this will. Uh, lighten up the the welfare burden for the for the city and for the government if you improve the life of those who are in need what is innovation in your opinion for, to me the real innovation is transformative and it's cultural so it transforms the way the people uh, uh, engage with each other if, if 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 it doesn't change this it's not to me it's not real true innovation it's just uh, old rules new output and uh, it's just uh, uh, you're just polishing something and make it more pretty but the substance is the same why culture is important because culture it's um, it's about the rules of engagement how do you engage with other uh, people and what do you want out of those uh, interactions if you want to if you want to keep it as it is you just keep the same rules if you want to to make an improvement you need to change those rules and uh, uh, you need to drive new behaviors you need to create the opportunities for people to do things in a different way but more meaningful why do we talk about innovation so much uh, innovation at this moment it's it's part of the so-called hype so there is um, um, you know um, everybody everything is about innovation we need innovation but at this moment it's very tech driven innovation the problem is that the average user of technology our you know the average citizen at this very stage cannot cope with the implication of the mass adoption of uh, technology which means you know practice uh, in a very practical terms means that uh, we do things but we don't think of the of, of the, uh, the implication of what we do just because we are shaped by the tools that we use you know if i want to you know paraphrase marshall McLuhan, and you know that he, he was saying this that uh, uh, we shape our tools thereafter the, the tools shape us if we consider um, a smartphone is basically shaping our behaviors on a daily basis and uh, we we live in a way in a society on, in a hurry basically and we don't have a moment to think about what we are doing there are those people that are like um, um, they think that every type of technology is good 
and uh, um, they call this the destructive chaos that is brought by techno technology innovation. So whatever happened is fine, then there will be a new order. Somehow it's gonna it's going to be fixed on its own. Then on the other hand, you are those pessimistic like uh, Evgeny Morozov and other people, other uh, you know scholars and and. Uh, I think I'm in between in the sense that uh, I'm not supporting one of these parts, but I think that critical thinking, because it's not mainstream, it's, it's urgently needed, more critical thinking. Is innovation top-down or bottom-up? Personally, both. During my research I found out that, uh, mm, and this can have an impact on, uh, uh, you know, on policy analysis, uh, activities and policy making. Um, you need both levers. You need to find a, an intersection point uh, between a break even point between uh, applying top down activities, so decision making for those who are supposed to decide, and also availing the tap into the diversity of the crowd. So you need to have both of these. You cannot do, you cannot rely only on one of these. If you rely on bottom up, at the, at the very, at the, at the, uh, there will be a point where you need to take decisions and the crowd does not want to take decisions. The, the crowd at a certain point wants to delegate somebody or at least somebody will emerge, some leader will emerge and will take decisions because nobody wants to take those decisions. But we need a new breed of leaders, we don't need any more uh, one-man show leaders and uh, basically the new leaders they need to see themselves as enabling platforms they need to help others to fulfill their potential so there's a lot of unlocked potential around within and outside the organization the leader duty is just to unlock those this potential to uh, you know create as much value and also impact for the all the community they are serving and the biggest challenges for business well, they need strategic tools because they need to think in a strategic way, in a more holistic, organic way. Uh, they need to break uh, to, to break uh, silos, so they need to break uh, the silo thinking. So, you know, uh, you know, silo thinking is basically, I work in finance, I don't want to know what the people in sales do, I don't want to know what marketing does, while it's nowadays it's more cross-sectorial, um, you know, uh, type of activity and learning. It's, it's a, uh, those, those organizations, those businesses, they need to become learning organizations, which means that on a daily basis, they need to learn from users, from their own colleagues, uh, um, you know, the, what, what works, what doesn't, and they need to adapt. Why are you so passionate about innovation? Because I am an activist and I believe that uh, the people that are in the innovation ecosystem, they are, most of them they are activists as well, even more they, are, they do politics. They want to shape society, they, want, they have a vision of what type of society they want to build. And you know, I'm part of this fabulous com global community on collaborative economy. Uh, we share, we embrace change and we adapt constantly and we constantly challenge ourselves and our beliefs. And, and we always ask ourselves the tough questions. Where are we heading to? Are we happy with this? What, what makes us unhappy? How can we change this? So we are pretty constant that, uh, especially in a community and you have people from everywhere and everybody can contribute and uh, society is moving fast and we don't want to be, as I said before, we don't want to be driven by technology, we want to driven, we want to drive uh, our behaviors and we want to, you know, ride the wave of technology in a way that uh, stays meaningful to our lives because we are looking for meaning and uh, the meaning is the most important thing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> it was a pleasure.